Welcome to Five Points Blues presentation of Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. Here are your hosts, Nikki Harrison and Christy Scales. Hello, happy Tuesday. Welcome to Back to the Basics. Everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but were too afraid to ask. I am Nikki Harrison here with Christy Scales. How you doing today? Uh, glowing a little bit, <laughs> along with Kent Garrison. Kent's filling in for Douglas today. Yeah. They're uh, you, behind Kent. the scenes, but with the uh, practice literally just wrapping up, day one of <laughs> mini camp, and a uh, little bit of a glow going. It was it's, a little warm it's steamy out, out there. there. So yeah, we're a little you know but it, it actually was a lot of fun today because it looked kind of like old cowboy home week we had a Good. some super bowl champions yes, out there daryl johnston michael Irvin, nate newton out there so it's always great to see the former players come back and absolutely interact with the with the young guys and i saw nate wearing a, a ball cap that it was the cowboy star and it was bedazzled with diamonds he's the only one who can really <laughs> pull he, that off he can pull it off <laughs> we should also mention demarcus ware last week coming yes, back and yes. uh, doing some some otas a couple of other things that i want to mention before we go into some of the big stories from mini camp today mm-hmm. day one mainly that zach martin and david irving were present and taking uh, parts in different aspects of practice not fully okay. participating but we want to wish a happy women veterans day absolutely to the more than two hundred thousand active duty uh, female military members that are here and ab- abroad. Uh, June yes. 12th is Women Veterans Day, and that's because uh, June 12th, 70 years ago, 1948, okay. uh, and that's when President Truman signed an act in which women could officially be allowed into the military. So wow. we, it's a big uh, anniversary for Women Veterans Day, and so we want to uh, acknowledge everyone and salute them. The other big thing is uh, Shireen Williams, yes. a good friend of and she's been on this podcast, longtime sports writer who has covered the Cowboys and the NFL beat. Now she's with Pro Football Talk. But it was announced uh, literally 90 minutes ago by the Pro Football Writers of America that Shireen is this year's winner of the Dick McCann Award. And it's like, well, you know, whatever. What does that mean? It means that Shireen is the first female sports writer that will be inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. And that's wow. going to take place this August. That is yeah. awesome. The, Absolutely Isn't that amazing? Awesome. Yes. A good friend of ours. We're so proud of her and happy for her. It's Absolutely. well-deserved. But there is a writer's wing, okay. basically, um, and it's the winners of this uh, award from Pro Football Writers of America. And uh, there's also a radio and television wing okay. uh, for the Pro Football Hall of Fame in Canton. It's called the Pete Rosell Award. Leslie Visser, back in 2006, it was the first female put in. Uh, with the Pete Rosell Award for radio and television. Shireen is the first female uh, writer, writer, reporter mm, going in. Good job. Through uh, the Dick McCann Award. Yeah. So, yeah. That's so fabulous. now I kind of have to change plans a little bit for training camp because now i got to get to August to see my buddy. Absolutely, inducted, you do. Uh, in for Canton. sure. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're really happy. Well, you brought up the, the news about Zach Martin and David Irving being out there today because – I know a lot of people get it confused. They did not participate in the OTAs because those are voluntary. That's right. Mini camps, and this is the way I'm going to remember it, mini camps, mandatory, M, M. <laughs> and the other M that's involved with that is money. Money. And that's because since it's mandatory, teams can find players for not attending camp, okay. mini camp, a mandatory camp, whether it's whether it's training camp or mini camp Got or it. missing practices during the regular season. And it is a uh, it's league wide. It's part of the collective bargaining agreement. If you miss day one of mandatory mini camp, it's fourteen thousand and seventy dollars. So someone. Time. So for example, uh, a lot of news this week about Earl Thomas, the safety okay. for Seattle, mm-hmm. saying I'm not reporting. I'm not showing up for the mandatory camp uh, for the Seattle Seahawks. So whether it's him or any other player. First day, just over $14,000. Second day would be just over $28,000. The third day would be $42,215. So if you skip all three days of a mandatory minicamp, then the team can fine you a total of $84,435. Wow. That amount is collectively bargained. When you get into training camp, it's actually even uh, more money. Uh, The first, uh, for example, the maximum daily fine $40,000. 
if you miss the first day, a second day, it actually goes down a little bit. It's descending order the second day okay. for uh, 2018 uh, would be 28,150. Uh, so, gotcha. yeah, it's well, a lot not of a, money. Not a small chunk of change. No, it's not. Mm-hmm. Even for these guys who are right. who make a lot of money, they don't want to lose that. No, they don't want to lose that. So, right now, are all of the teams doing their mini camps? Well, uh, actually, the Patriots kind of changed things up, and uh, they had their mini camp last week, and they're doing okay. OTAs this week. But basically, this is the almost every team is doing their mini camp this week, okay. and then everyone has their break across the league, and it's a break for players and kind of the uh, coaches too. They'll get a little bit bit of a break in July. Yeah. Uh, um, not having to do meetings, you know, last chance for vacation until teams report for training camp. Got the it. Cowboys Got fly it. out on July 24th, mm-hmm. and then we'll have the State of the Cowboys press conference uh, on Wednesday, July 25th, and then the first practice in Oxnard will be Thursday the 26th. Okay. So It'll after, be here ab- before we know Yeah, it. so day one <laughs> of mini camp today, day two tomorrow, Wednesday, day three, Thursday, and then break. the players get their break until reporting you know, flying out Very for good. training camp. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, like I said, it'll be here before we know it. We'll be talking yeah. about training camp. Yeah, and, and I'm <laughs> glad you mentioned uh, Zach Martin and David Irving because, mm-hmm. like you said, those were the two big question marks coming in because they had missed time at OTAs, but for different reasons. And I want to clarify again that Zach Martin not uh, being on the field at practices for OTAs, the voluntary ones, mm-hmm. was not a holdout. <laughs> okay? Got it. it um, right. It, you know, he he uh, is back on the field because we're on the cusp of the new six-year deal that would make him the highest-paid guard in the NFL. Wow. Uh, David Irving's situation was taking care of family business. Okay. And so okay. he has missed different times um, uh, with – not just the OTA practices, but also with some of the off-season workouts, the voluntary, voluntary. workouts and stuff. Okay, mm-hmm. because he's been flying back and forth uh, to. But it's good California. for people to know that because then if yeah. they don't, they think something's happening. Is he on the team? Yeah, you you, you only read a headline or mm-hmm. you you turn on sports radio and hear just a little bit. You don't hear the full exactly segment, and it's like, oh, wow, these guys, what are they doing, missing that time? Mm-hmm. You know, and mm-hmm. even though it's voluntary, they should be there. It's like sometimes life happens, happens, Absolutely. and you have to take care of your business. That's right. And when you have a player like Zach Martin who wants a, a contract extension, if he were to go out on the field and take part in a practice and have some kind of injury, right, and then you lose all that leverage for a long-term extension, for sure. you know, it's, for sure. th- th- that, that, that was a business decision, yeah. right? I get and, that. And David's was – taking care of family matters. Which, uh, how can you fault them? Yeah, and then yeah. Uh, we also should mention to some other news from uh, today. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach and David were out there taking part, but not full participants in practice. So, okay. uh, and that's because, for example, Zach not taking part in the last couple of weeks of OTAs, you know, it's just kind of like, okay, do some of the individual work and then do some stuff off to the side with ease team drills, it. ease into it. Saint David Irving was just going to work on the side today. Tyron Smith who's our all-pro left tackle. Um, he did individual drills today, but not everything. He did some stuff off to the side. Even though it's non-contact during more of the team stuff, he kind of worked off to the side. Uh, Jason Garrett, in his press conference this morning, uh, told reporters that Tyron has been dealing with a little bit of a shoulder injury. Oh. So that's why he's not a, a full participant. Totally Got precautionary Got it. For, to have him in, you know, we know that Tyron knows what to do. <laughs> yeah. So let's give yeah, some of these definitely. these really um, beneficial reps to in mini camps and OTAs to younger guys mm-hmm. who can benefit more from them. I get it. Uh, and then, uh, of course, with uh, Malik Collins, Lewis Neal, uh, Terrence Williams – uh, not participating on the field because they're uh, rehabbing from injuries. Right. And then uh, Leighton Vanderesh, the Cowboys' first round draft pick, was out there on the field, but just watching from the side or from behind when the drills were going on. Uh, he also missed OTAs last week, a little bit of an ankle injury. So, okay. precautionary, let's not have anything 
happen with that ankle, you know, to yeah. exacerbate anything and, uh, you know, just have him watch and hopefully he should be good to go for a training camp That's in good. July. Mm-hmm. That's good. Now, I have, this is kind of a silly question, but I know we have a ton of new guys on the team. Mm-hmm. Does it take a while to, to learn their numbers, know their names? I mean, because there's so many new faces, new players. I, I don't know. I'll tell you the secret of from a longtime reporter, here's the secret of knowing if a defensive lineman, a young guy, has a really good chance of making the Cowboys team. Okay. If Rod Marinelli gives him a nickname, then that's good news. I love Coach Rod, but <laughs> he's not great at names. And he, he calls everybody by nicknames. I think a lot of Cowboys Nation know about um, – that's oh, let's. Funny. Oh, oh, yeah. Well, Demar- Demarcus Lawrence, Tank, he's had that one for a long time. Yes. But um, Bull is uh, Brian Price. Dino is David Irving because he's so tall and long, like, long neck. It's Dino from like <laughs> Dino the Flintstones. Yes. You know. So, uh, which Rod watched when they were first run, not reruns on Cartoon Network. <laughs> so that that's how I know. But to answer your question, sure. You yeah. know, as a media member, what you're doing is you're trying to match numbers and then you have guys like Cheeto Awuzie mm-hmm. who changed his numbers yes, right and yes. so he uh, switched to number 24 this year which he wanted all along but uh, last year when he came in as a rookie it was being used by veteran cornerback Nolan Carroll yes. who actually got cut during the season and and uh, but Cheeto had already you know he he had already been given his number, and so uh, once Nolan Carroll, once we got to the off season, uh, then twenty four was available. So Cheeto announced that change on his Instagram account or Twitter or something oh, like wow. that on social media back in, I believe February or something okay. like that. So yeah, so you always have a few curveballs like that. But do you remember the story that we were talking about either last week or a couple of weeks ago where um, we were talking about rookie players earning the stars on yes. their helmet? Yeah, absolutely. And I was telling the story about how Bill Parcells, you know, had taken the stars off and but he was also the one that had uh the the tape over the front of the forehead okay the front the helmet on o- above the forehead and then written in uh, black sharpie was the player's name and that oh. was that was for yeah. not not just rookies but for every player so here's <laughs> darren woodson who's already the leading tackler in the history of the dallas cowboys wow. and he has woodson written across his name and, and across his helmet and it's so that the coaches could identify the player now of course they're going to know who darren woodson is of course but, but you know i i kind of like that, that because uh, the great thing about training camp from a, a reporter's perspective is you get to be on the sideline out in Oxnard, not just behind the end zone, but right mm-hmm. on the sideline. So you're really close. And so you are close enough to read the names That's on good. there. And so when it's when it's the first few days of camp and you're still trying to memorize the fourth and fifth string guys, the undrafted rookie free agents yes. that played at a small school, guys that you had never heard of before they signed with the Cowboys, it would be helpful to Helps have that. You. That's good. <laughs> I like that. I, speaking of numbers, um, I saw a story about Alan Hearns and he he's always been 88 mm-hmm. and I guess people expected him to be 88 coming here following Des Bryant and Michael Irvin and Drew Pearson, the great 88s, but he has chosen to be 17 um, in honor of the, 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 the children, well, the high school students that were, were killed in the school shooting yeah. in Florida. And oh, that just touched me so, yeah. so much because that's very humbling. He's from that area. Mm-hmm. He didn't did not attend the, that high school, right? But is uh, from a you know grew up very close uh, close by. Mm-hmm. And but remember that when Hearn signed with the team, Des was still on board, so he gotcha. couldn't have gotten he, he have could could not 80. have had you know it was already taken by Des. Gotcha. And then Des was released later. Yes. But uh, so I guess if he wanted. He probably could have changed to 88, but right. he had already, you know, made this commitment and announced announced 17 for such a special reason mm, that that's he's beautiful. gonna he's gonna keep number 17. I love that. I love mm-hmm. that story. Yeah, yeah. He's a he's a great guy, and and um, it's really neat to talk to the new wide receivers coach Sanjay Lal. Okay, and he you know was really high on Alan Hearns. And uh, I should mention that the other uh, veteran free agent that the Cowboys signed, Deontay Thompson, uh, he's one of the players that, for precautionary reasons, was held out of some of the on-field stuff today. And that's because um, he's dealing with a bit of an Achilles uh, issue. So he wasn't out there uh, today. But 
you know, hopefully he'll be good to go for training camp and the like. But that's going to be, to me, the biggest story going into the 2018 season okay. overall for the Cowboys is how do you fix the passing game? Because it was not working. It was not <laughs> The working. latter half of last season. And uh, especially when uh, Zeke, w you know, was suspended and you right. didn't have a good run, you know, as, as dynamic a, a run game. And you also had injuries with Tyron Smith and the like. There were a lot of reasons why the passing game uh, suffered last year, why Dak's numbers went down, why Cole Beasley's numbers were just horrific by his standards, by what he had done the previous couple years. And it's like, all right, they got to fix the passing game. Great. Oh, by the way, you no longer have Des, mm -hmm. and you know, and Jason Witten has retired. Right. So has James Hanna, and then the guy who was kind of the bigger play guy down the field, Bryce Butler, left in free agency. Right. So that's four right. holes to fill. And then uh, Alan Hearns, it, you know, a lot to like. Deontay Thompson, speed guy, some things to like with him. Mm -hmm. But and then Jason Witten, you know, right. retiring. You, right. you draft a fourth rounder, Dalton Schultz, but. That's a lot of question marks. Yes. A lot of big, big holes to fill. Big holes to fill. But here's why I'm optimistic about the passing game this season. Okay. Because for the quarterback in the passing game, the best friend for a quarterback is the run game. The Cowboys run the ball to set up the pass. There are a lot of things in college and pro ball now where it's the opposite, where the passing game sets up the run. Okay. But if you are able to run the ball, to know that when you turn and hand the ball off to Zeke Elliott, that mm -hmm. he's going to get four or five yards, maybe average five and a half yards. If he's going to get positive yardage on first down, and get five or six yards and set up second and short mm -hmm. instead of second and eight or second and ten, yeah. you know that helps your passing game. And it means that the defense is going to have to commit more resources to stopping the run. Mm. So the safeties, who are the deep guys on defense that stay towards the back to help defend the pass, they're kind of like the umbrella, the upper yep. level. Don't let people get past you. When you don't have a lot of threats in the passing game and you're running the ball real well, what they have to do is take at least one, one of those guys and sneak them up and be in the box, kind of like where the linebackers are closer to the line of scrimmage to help stop the run game. Got it. And when Makes they sense. commit the safety or other defenders, you know, when, when they, when they have to commit to the run game, it opens up options in the passing game. Got it. Got it. There's not as many people down closer to the edge of the umbrella. Uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Towards the back of the field to either get behind them or Got match, it. you know, mm -hmm. when they have to worry about that. Makes sense. Uh, and you know when 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 um, the pass rushers can't tee off on the pass, you know to tee off on a pass rush to come get the quarterback when they have to hesitate just a little bit uh, with a play action pass. A play action pass is when the quarterback takes the snap and he fakes the handoff to uh, Zeke. Mm -hmm. Dak fakes the handoff to Zeke, keeps the ball and throws it. Well, just that. Faking the handoff yes. means that the linebackers and the safeties just have that second of hesitation. Is it a handoff? Is it a pass? And just that second of, you know, yeah. really half a second, quarter of a second of hesitation, that may be just enough for the uh, tight end to get behind him or, you know, uh, delay the safety to come over to help the cornerback. It opens up so many things. Very good. Got so it, it so if if, it. if Zeke stays healthy and on the field this year, mm -hmm. um, if the we've got Connor Williams now at left guard and so many positive reviews through OTAs and hopefully through the rest of minicamp and training yeah. camp having him at left guard, and if Tyron Smith stays healthy at left tackle and we get that run game going the way that it was in Zeke and Dak's rookie season, mm -hmm. the run being you know the identity of the offense, then you know the receiver by committee approach okay. could work this year. Okay, that sounds good. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. It absolutely makes sense. What about our defense? Sean Lee staying healthy. I think <laughs> I think what's really exciting about the – well, the big question on the defense is going to be, can Demarcus Lawrence, okay. with his 14 and a half sacks last year and his first trip to the Pro Bowl, can he repeat what he did last year? Mm -hmm. And actually that was a question asked to Jason Garrett this morning. And because – 
hey, nobody's supr- – DeMar- DeMarcus Lawrence is not surprising anybody, all right? Uh, offenses have to game plan for him now. Got it. And so, you know, he's going to continue working as hard as he ever – has he's going to continue to get all that attention but the way that the thing that's going to help Demarcus Lawrence the most this year is if somebody else steps up and can win in in Jason Garrett's words their one-on-one battles okay can can we have someone like an Anthony Spencer step up the way that Anthony Spencer did to help uh, Demarcus Ware Demarcus Ware's best pass rushing years with the Cowboys were when Anthony Spencer had stepped up, and you had bookend threats. You had okay. pass rushers coming from both sides. And who's, so who's going to step up? The Probably the starting, the, the opposite defensive end, the bookend to Demarcus Lawrence will be probably Tyrone Crawford okay. as a starter. Yeah. But then um, you – you know, it, David Irving coming up the middle as a defensive tackle, if he's, you know, can play consistently and be in shape at the start of the season after missing some offseason work and get all of his family stuff in line. Yes. Uh, getting a pass rush up the middle is even better, better. than getting it from the side because it means that it's right in the quarterback's face. Uh, Where does Sean Lee and Jalen Smith fit into that? Sean Lee, the. Uh, Rod Marinelli, in terms of pass rush, Rod mm-hmm. Marinelli does not blitz a lot with linebackers, okay. but when he does, they love Jalen Smith's skill set as a pass rusher. Sean Lee can do anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. you can send him, and, and he's going to get his guy. But uh, Rod, over the last few years, it has used the cornerbacks more, like out of the slot, Orlando Scandrick. Sometimes you'd see him. Orlando was a little skinny cornerback who would line up in the slot just past the tight, between the tight end and the um, wide receiver. Yeah. And he'd come in as a surprise blitz, you know, gotcha. to, to do that. But um, I think it's going to be really interesting this year to see how – um, uh, Rod, you know, if Rod uses the linebackers more gotcha. for that. Gotcha. I'm but excited. The, the, the other big mm. thing about uh, the defense, so Demarcus Lawrence, can he repeat what he did last year? Yeah. Sure, but he's going to need help f- with other guys along the line, part of the def- defensive rotation, yeah. okay? Mm-hmm. Um, can Sean Lee stay healthy? Jalen Smith, late, where's Leighton Vander Esch fitting into mm-hmm. all this? Yes, Again, absolutely. with his ankle injury, not taking part in mini camps. He was, was working second team, middle linebacker, early in OTAs behind Jalen Smith. But, you know, that could, you know, we'll see during training camp, we'll start to see kind of some of the packages and substitutions and stuff. I think we'll still see a lot okay. of Leighton Vander Esch this season. Okay. Uh, but the other big thing is I'm so excited about our defensive backfield. Our okay. young defensive backs, and it's uh, a lot of the excitement is because of our new defensive backs coach, coach Chris Richard. Okay, he's the oh, one. Oh, he is intense. Yeah, he's intense, <laughs> man. You should see him out on the field. I mean, he. I, I think wow. that he burns more calories than the players Absolutely. out there. Absolutely, he's a out former there player himself. With them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so he, um, he's the one that was the coach for the Legion of Boom defense the defensive backfield Mm -hmm. for the Seattle Seattle Seahawks and so he started off as their defensive backs coach and then became their defensive coordinator this is his first year with the Cowboys and the Cowboys you know we have uh, Cheeto coming back for his second year Jordan Lewis for his second year Byron Jones who's the incumbent starter at safety is now playing a cornerback okay so he's going to be a big adjustment well, when Byron was drafted in the first round, uh, this three years, four years ago, this, okay. um, he he was drafted as a cornerback. Okay. But then towards the and he, he played a lot of games at cornerback. But then because of different injuries and because we had Brandon Carr and Morris Claiborne and Orlando Scandrick and different players in and out of the lineup with injuries and everything else, Byron ended up having to play more safety. Gotcha. And then eventually became the full-time safety. Okay. And so... So cornerback he, is may, maybe a little more natural for him. And he was drafted... He When when the Cowboys drafted him out of University of Connecticut, it was to play cornerback. Okay. So there were different circumstances mm-hmm. <laughs> that led to him, you know, changing position. But now he's back at, yes, it, what would be the more natural position. But again, awesome. he hadn't played... That's the thing. When you're a versatile guy, you know, it's yes. like, oh, we love these guys because he could play inside, he could play deep, he can play outside. And, oh, we love this defensive lineman. They could play inside at tackle or out at end. We can move them all around. Well, that's great that you're, you're versatile because it means right. you're going to get more chances to play. But 
He's been being a safety. There's for a three question years. of jack of all trades, master mm-hmm. of none. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So coaches have to be real careful with these young players. In you know, do we leave them at one spot and let them master that? Yeah. Or do we give them time and p- very valuable practice reps? You don't get that much practice time. You don't. Um, mm-hmm. So. You know, do we do we have him do a lot of different things? Got it. And then whatever the best laid plans, they're going to be injuries to mess it all up anyway. <laughs> all it never fails. That's what happened with <laughs> with Byron. So it never yeah. fails. Mm-hmm. Well, we have five minutes left, and I definitely want to top on uh, touch on this before we go. The twelve mighty orphans. Yes, I finished something. It. <laughs> you finished it. That's our Rod Marinelli book club, yes. the first selection. And I, I want you to tell everyone about mm-hmm. Cowboys U last week. Oh, the yes. The final day of OTAs. Uh, instead of being a practice day, Jason Garrett does something special with Cowboys U, and then this book and Rod Marinelli's book club that he started here on Five Points Blue was involved in. Absolutely. Uh, in Cowboys U. Cowboys U last Thursday is an absolutely awesome event. Um, several young high school football players are invited. They're selected by Coach Garrett to come out and play some seven on seven. And they, the co- the players are actually their coaches. Um, yeah, the Cowboys players yes. are the high school <laughs> players, treat. coaches. There Absolutely. were 192 players this year. I didn't know how from many different, there were. Different, different districts around North Texas. I love it. Well, mm-hmm. it's my third year helping out. I'm, I'm a team leader, a team mom. And um, I just I just absolutely love being around these and, kids. And who was you? Okay, so <laughs> so they're divided into teams, but instead of like Team Blue or Team Silver yes. or Team Star, the uh, Cowboys leaders, the veteran leaders, certainly the team captains, they each have their own teams. Mm-hmm. And you were the you were the uh, team mom for Team Bailey. Team and Dan Bailey. Team Dan Bailey. <laughs> well, he's a kicker. What does he know about football? You guys must have lost every well, one of your round robin. Absolutely fl- not. Fl- what? <laughs> we were the champions. What? Yes. Yes. Team. And 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 check this out. The 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 two teams that played in the championship were Team Bailey and Team Chris Jones. <laughs> so the two specialists, right? Everybody yes. makes fun of the kicker and the punters in, in football. Oh, they're not real football players. And the two specialists, Absolutely. their teams were the ones. So, yeah. So so what happened on Thursday morning was the, the you know, it's like, okay, Team Jeff Heath, mm-hmm. Team Tyron Smith, Team Dak, Team Zeke, yeah. Team Chris Jones, Team Byron Jones, Team Demarcus Lawrence. Yep. Um, yep. I'm missing a few here, but each of the, so each of those guys, they go into the team meeting room on Thursday morning, and then Jason Garrett has the team captain select his coaches. That's right. So for <laughs> example, <laughs> team team Dan Bailey. Dan mm-hmm. Bailey drafted Jamil Showers. Yes. And to Jeff be Swaim. one, of, and yeah, Jeff Swaim was his offensive coordinator. He was awesome. Yeah, the tight end. Now our starting tight end, Jeff yes. Swaim. And so yeah, they just they went undefeated. It and, was amazing. So so the round robin portion is is in the morning, mm-hmm. and in the afternoon there's the life skills session, and uh, Rod Marinelli is yeah. something special with this. He book. he presented this book to all of the participants. He sent them home with this book and with their actual coaches. Um, this is a special book. It's it's based on a true story. It was really, really good. It was yeah. really, really good. Yeah, and back in the late 1920s, 1929, the orphanage in Fort Worth. Yes. And uh, a, a, a teacher, a, a male a football coach who had uh, – he moves to Fort Worth. Yeah. He takes Rusty over Russell. as a teacher. And Rusty Russell, Coach Russell, starts a football team at the orphanage. There's only 12 kids. They're these scrawny little uh. – the scrawny little scrawny orphans. Little they orphans. don't. They don't have football. They have no equipment. Nothing. But over the throughout the 1930s, they challenged for state championships yes. in the biggest classifications, beating the lights of Highland Park and the big teams out in Lubbock and yes, and, Fort and Worth. Abilene. And 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 they yeah. had to endure so much. I mean, because even though they had a, a following, a huge following of, of fans, people wanting them to succeed, they also had people that didn't. Like, I mean, the state coming up with all these different rules to keep them out yeah. of, of playing. Yeah, they were whooping up on the Fort Worth schools. Mm-hmm. So the Fort Worth high school coaches, the high school, they didn't want they didn't the want. orphanage to be able to compete because they were getting whooped by them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but what was <laughs> what was really cool about this um, with Rod Marinelli talking to those kids at Cowboys U last week, in addition to the book, thank you to the 
the Gene and Jerry Jones Family yes. Foundation and to the Texas Lottery for purchasing the books on behalf of Rod and Five Points Blue mm-hmm. and providing them. Uh, but there's a postcard, a uh, self-addressed stamp postcard to mail back to Rod Marinelli here at the Star. And so when the kids finish the book, then they're writing a note to Rod to yes. let him know what they got out of yes. it. So and anyway, his, his big thing when he spoke to the to the kids, it was fabulous. He says, "If you start something, finish it." It took you a couple it months, me, but yes, you finished it. Did, it. But I and finished did it. it. <laughs> did the rest of you who who ordered it for our Five Points Blue Book Club have you finished it? Good we'll question. get we'll give you a little time. Mm-hmm. We're get we're going to be on hiatus uh, yes. until uh, training camp gets going. So you have a couple months. That's if you right. haven't ordered Twelve Mighty Orphans yet by Jim Dent, and the second selection for the Rod Marinelli Book Club is The Big Scrum yep. by John J. Miller. And so we'll set up a time with Rod once we reconvene in late July and through August, and uh, have him uh, tell us about Big Scrum and yeah. why he selected that. Yeah. So cool. So, yeah, but in the meantime, we hope everyone has a wonderful summer. Yes. And we'll be back with you from training camp. Thank you for joining us for everything you wanted to know about Cowboys football, but we're too afraid to ask right here on Five Points Blue. This has been a production of Five Points Blue, DallasCowboys.com, and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah!